Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called The Box Trolls. It's the latest stop motion animated feature from Laka Entertainment, the same creators behind Coraline and Paranorman. It stars newcomer Isaac Hempstead Wright with Ellie Fanning, Ben Kingsley, Tony Collette, Jared Harris, Nick Frost, Richard Ayalde, Tracy Morgan, Simon Pegg, with D. Bradley Baker, and Steve Blum. It's written by Anina Burnell and Adam Parva, which is based on the book called Here Be Monsters by Alan Snow, and is directed by Graham Anubal and Anthony Succi. The movie begins set in the British town known as Cheesebridge in 1805. Lots of rumors have been spread across the entire townspeople that trolls, known as the box trolls, have kidnapped and killed young children. So as a result, they hired a pest exterminator named Archibald Snatcher, who's voiced by Ben Kingsley, who actually offered a deal with Lord Parley Rhine to exterminate every single box troll in order to become a membership in the White Hats, a group of cheese-loving aristocrats. It turns out that the box trolls have proven to become very peaceful and wildly creative creatures who are wearing cardboard boxes, emerging underground at night to find many trash items out there in order to create very beautiful inventions. That is until they spotted a young baby boy by the name of Eggs, which apparently he's wearing a box you know, with an egg symbol on there, you know, and who was later being voiced by Isaac Hempstead Wright you know, as, you know, as, as a 10 year old boy later on. And he's already being taken good care of by a box troll named Fish. As, grow, as Eggs finally grew up 10 years later, he became very dismayed over the disappearance of all the box trolls due to Snatcher's plan. Meanwhile, Lord Carly Rhines his neglected daughter named Wendy, voiced by Ellie Fanning, had grows very frustrated at being ignored by his father and actually throws his white hat out of the window. Leaving to the house to retrieve it, she finally spotted eggs running around for trash along with the two box trolls. You know, only to be discovered by Snatch, by Snatcher and his men, you know, who are chasing them around, and actually found the Corley Rhines' white hats uh, later on. I mean, earlier, yeah, you know, later on, and actually retrieved it. You know, Ace was very devastated that so much about this that. He finally puts together a disguise, and the very next day at the annual fair, he actually saw um, a woman, you know, telling a, a a strange story about the trough shell's baby, who 11 years ago had been presumably kidnapped and killed by a box troll. Which apparently this whole thing was was a misunderstanding. So at that rate. Um, Wendy had finally discovered the boy already disguised. It turns out to be, you know, Eggs himself that he just spotted uh, last night. So after that, they finally directed him to Snatcher's headquarters, which happens to be an abandoned factory. Sneaking inside, Eggs have finally found Fish already locked in the cage and frees him. Snatcher had to try one of his cheese, which apparently, once he tried it, it turns out that he had a food allergy you know, towards the cheese that caused him fatigue swelling over his face and his hands. So yeah. So Ace and Fish had tried to sneak out in the factory only to be caught by Mr. Grizzle as well as Mr. Trout and Mr. Pickles. Snatcher had recognized Ace as being the true Shaw's baby and reveals all to the captures of box trolls that are actually still alive and they're building the machine inside so when he finally overheard it and they escaped from the factory 
and, and has taken shelter inside the Boxer's Troll's underground cavern, which now Wendy finally discovered the truth behind them. So, in order for, for Eggs to finally uh, be able to meet the entire townspeople out there to discover the truth, they had to wind up going to a meeting you know, where everybody's in town, you know, everybody's already you know, dressed up in different clothing, doing all these you know, dancing and all this other stuff. Lots of cheese going around. You know, Ace had tried to finally reveal to the entire town the real truth of the true show baby. But unfortunately, really poorly Ryan didn't believe him. It was mostly because the huge cheese wheel had finally went straight to the gate outside and, yeah, and into the river. So Eggs finally got kicked out from the group to only find out that the snatcher who's already been disguised as the woman already that we last saw him in the annual fair, that he was actually planning to kill every single box troll already with his machine. So it's up to Eggs and Wendy to save the entire box trolls from Snatcher's evil plan to wipe them all off, be able to find his true identity, and be able to tell the entire townspeople that this whole thing was a lie. And that's what the movie's all about. And it's very well made, as it turned out. I, I really did enjoy this movie a lot. It's not up in the same league as Coraline and Paranormans, when it comes to the story, but it was definitely a different animated feature that I never thought I'd seen before. But it's definitely, it's an interesting adaptation of Let's Be Monsters, and it worked pretty well. The animation is, like, like Coraline and Paranorman, it's spectacular. Awesome, a very dark look of it, has a definitely genuine feel to what was it like being inside um, a stop motion animated film that you've seen. Yeah, they did show this movie in 3D by the way. But I, I only saw this movie in 2D in theaters last night. And wow, um, it, it's a very interesting story and, and yet it was also very hilarious, very funny at times. I really enjoy you know, the characters that they went into it. Had a very good cast. Yeah. Especially newcomer you know, Isaac Hempstead Wright, you know, I think he did a very good job, you know, playing the role as Apes. With Ellie Fanning, you know, just, you know, with, with a British accent, you know, doing a voice of Wendy, you know, she was very good too. You know, there are also times when I think she also does make those facial expressions sort of similar to Coraline at some point. You know, I, I sort of noticed that too when, when she was doing that. Well, I mean, some of them, though. That's what I thought. Yeah, the creatures were awesome. I mean, they are very creative. I was a bit surprised that both of them were being voiced by, you know, D. Bradley Baker and Steve Blum. Yes, the same guy who did the voice of uh, Spike in Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, very interesting that he actually did some voice acting for this one. And D. Bradley Baker's been around for a long time. He's been doing a lot of voice acting for other shows. They also had uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, you know, the, the two guys behind Shaun of the Dead, you know, Hot Fuzz, and The World's End. You know, they've been they've been working together for years, especially that TV show they once did um, back in the late '90s called Space. Yeah, it was a British TV series, so it was good that they got to work, even though they're both playing different characters. You know. Yeah, Nick Foss is just playing one of the bad guys and you know, part of you know, part of Snatcher. Which actually, you know, he wasn't that bad in that one. And, and Simon Pig just plays the father, or what seems to be. But yeah. But anything, uh, but everything in the movie was just perfect. That was exactly what I expected when I see the movie The Box Trolls. I was looking forward to seeing this movie when I first saw the trailer, because after Coraline and Paranorman, I, I was really looking forward to seeing this. And, and I really enjoyed it. It was, really, it was perfect. So anyway, um, definitely go see this movie if you get a chance. I mean, especially if you love those two films that I mentioned. This is definitely a treat. 
it's definitely the best animated film I've seen so far this year, uh, along with the Lego Movie and How to Train Your Dragon 2 and all the rest. It's it's right up there. So anyway, I give the box trolls a solid four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.